Okay, so let's get started with today. Um, the announcement and the resource pack for the upcoming challenge, the boss fight, will be up sometime next week. We are dealing with the Portrait Studio update, so I did promise a Portrait Studio update after the sale. The sale is still ongoing. The one to two week sale started on the 16th. It's ending on the 31st, so if you haven't grabbed your copy for Portrait Studio, the price will go up. 50% um, almost higher than it is right now if you want your copy of Portrait Studio. And uh, if you are running Mac uh, and you have Portrait Studio um, and you just downloaded it, Wine works very, very well. If you guys know what that is, it runs um, kind of like PC uh, software on Windows software on a Mac inside Wine. Uh, it's Wine, W-I-N-E. Um, so uh, Patreon, if anyone is interested in Patreon, signing up for April Patreon is, is happens on the 1st. So if you want to make it for April Patreon, if you want to get April uh, rewards, you have to sign up before the 1st. If you sign up on the 2nd and 3rd, it doesn't work like that because Patreon currently hasn't equipped my channel with the security protection. It's equipped other larger channels, meaning it doesn't allow the pay up front people feature so people can go in, sample products, and run away, and it's just horrible. They can actually steal uh, all of the stuff in Patreon, sneak into the Discord. Um, so remember that for security purposes, if you want to be part of April Patreon, you part, want to be part of the announcements, the groups, the assignments, all of that stuff, it's, it has to be done before the first. I do apologize if you don't get your reward. If you signed up after the second and the third, I've sent out numerous announcements for everyone about to join who has joined. Um, please remember that you don't get rewards on the 2nd and 3rd. You have to be there on the listing for April before the 1st. On the 1st they start um, um, just registering. Uh, so please remember that. And uh, But yeah, April Patreon is going to offer um, all of the work that I've done this month. It's going to offer an assignment uh, assigned and reviewed on Discord. You get to be part of the private Discord. And uh, that's the apprentice tier, and then anything in between also you get time-lapse video lessons of my personal work, which is my latest painting, the portrait. Um, you get the full video of the Patreon meetup, um, so if anyone's interested in that, Patreon is available for you. And then finally, I think that's it, the, uh, the, the yeah, I think that's the three, the Portrait Studio sale, the Patreon, and the upcoming challenge all will be done by the end of the week, basically, uh, or by the weekend. Um, the sale is done on the 31st, uh, you have to sign up for Patreon before the 1st, and hopefully after this crazy, crazy weekend, and um, all of that gets out of the way, by the 2nd, by Monday, hopefully, fingers crossed, God willing, I will finish that resource pack and upload it for you. I'll write up the full description of the game-inspired final boss battle illustration. It's going to be basically, I described to you the game that you're pitching, that, that you're working for. Um, it's a game development scenario, and you're doing the poster for the final boss battle, a loading screen poster, a kind of like a splash. It has to be fully rendered. It has to have concept uh, art before. Uh, so any pre-production stuff, you have to design the character, who the main character, side-scroller character who's fighting the boss. You design the boss as well um, and fully illustrate the stare-down kind of uh, stare-down battle, pre-battle stare-down is what the, the, this, uh, this whole uh, splash is going to be about. This is going to be really, really fun. I, I encourage a lot of color. I encourage a lot of madness. Um, if you feel like getting started now that you have an idea for it, you can. But I might change up some details depending on what the resource pack ends up um, you know, finalizing for detail. Uh, but if you want to think about composition, framing, cinema, that's going to be a big part of this challenge upcoming. Copying shamelessly uh, scenes, Dutch angles, uh, framing, uh, all that stuff, all that beautiful cinematic action stuff. Um, I'm going to be requesting references inspired by your favorite action scenes from movies, um, favorite stare downs from movies. I'm going to send in some of my own copies as well, my favorite pieces. Um, all in the resource pack available, hopefully by this weekend. If not, if not, and I'm not pro I'm being very honest, transparent, if not, it would be next weekend. Um, and then, of course, I'll give you a, a long period of time, at least a month and a half, uh, to complete your uh, boss battle illustration, okay? So it's going to be really, really fun, full environment, full characters, kind of combining our two main uh, uh, you know, types of, of challenges, environment or character. Uh, so that's it for for today. No, that's it for um, the announcements. Let's get started on our uh, critique hour. So let me see what I'm starting with. Um, 
Lots of stuff, lots of stuff. Okay, I will start with this dude. <clears throat> so this guy has a very, very short ca uh, canvas that he's been built in. Once we fix this canvas and um, we kind of give it the space it needs, what happens is you kind of notice how tiny, teeny, weeny his head is. We will run it to bits. <laughs> um, and I'm just gonna clean that up. Um, and just kind of fix that seam right there. Okay, so the head is very tiny. Uh, it looks like a shrunken head. But I want to show you again the power of this tool that we have which is our brain. So if we remove this for a while, we're just going to be looking at this. Um, we're not going to be looking at this. Uh, we're just going to be looking at the body. We're not going to be looking at the head. We've hidden it. When I unveil the head again, uh, you can see for yourselves how small the head was if nobody believes me, if you guys think it's a good size, if some of you think that it's fine. Um, so some of the stuff that I would change in the meantime would be the position of this leg. It's a little bit kind of outside of the hip, where if the hip were here, the femur would kind of travel this way. So it feels like the leg could be over there, and he's kind of leaning forward in his sermon. I really don't understand what he's doing with his hands. Um, it's kind of difficult for me to tell. And altogether, this is a really, really boring light environment. The light environment is the most boring thing about this painting, um, because it, the light environment should pr typically promote and an and interesting stage with which we are experiencing the character. Why would we do the best, kind, unless he's evil, unless he's kind of like creeping out of the darkness, there's really no reason to dim his environment so much. So you've darkened it from the top down, which makes zero sense to me, even though the light of the objects is uh, from, from the top down. So it should be the other way around. The top of the room should be brighter and everything else should be darker towards the lower half if the flood universal light is coming from the top or if the window in the cavern or medieval hallway or whatever is from the top. Um, so you've kind of just taken your creative liberties here, copied some other illustration you might see. This is not good. Never have flat gradients in the background. They really don't create an open room. You can have a, the slight presence of a, of a horizon line or a spherical horizon line or, I don't know, something in the background, some like column type thing to uh, make it feel like you're trying to illustrate a complete image, but it's not, it's not going to uh, salvage the painting if you're, it, it's not going to make sense if you're painting the object from your own light source and the background from another reference, or if you just felt like using this kind of backdrop. It's not making sense if you tried to force an environment that makes no sense, it's actually the opposite of what it should be, if you could have just had a flat gray background and that's all you could have done. Um, so, tiny as fuck, right? <laughs> so this is the reveal. <laughs> what do you think? Tiny as all fuck, right? It makes no sense. Because, anyway, so I'm sorry about the swearing, but it's, I'm just, I'm very passionate. So right here, when we're looking at this, our brain right now and seeing so many different people throughout our lives, people in the mall, people at school, it knows what's large and what's small. And when we hide the head, our brain is now filling in the rest. Our brain is doing the job of showing us what's missing. Our brain is actually, actually putting a picture in here. Um, so yeah, the head is missing, but your brain is actually showing you a head right now. You just don't know it. That's your proportional, proportionate, uh, proportion instinct. Um, that's what she said. My God. Um, uh, because, guys, make sure you focus. Uh, so, uh, so you know, when your brain doesn't see something that should be there, it, it wonders where it is and therefore projects the missing object in there. Because it projected the missing object in there and we revealed the object, um, we, we, we can see that it is, my gosh, it's very, very small. Uh, so... Only, only seeing this, not because I showed you, not only because I told you, but because I hid it. So I'm trying to illustrate to you here. Um, we're hiding the head. That's why when we unveil it, it feels small because our brain filled in the rest. Our brain actually fixed it in our, in our head. And so this should be the size. Um, maybe even bigger. Maybe I'm overcompensating. 
I, I really feel like this is a good size. It might need to be a little smaller. <laughs> Here, it's okay, Edge Boy. <laughs> um, so, very, very small head. And then the background value was just, uh, it wasn't helping anybody. You really weren't doing much for the illustration with this. See, this is, I can't, I can't work like this, you know. Oh, Dios. Let me see if this gets easier. If it doesn't get easier, I promise you I'll give up. I just can't use any higher a lasso because... Because, uh, oh Jesus, oh God, okay, <laughs> God, I nearly lost it all. Um, I can't do it any higher um, tolerance because I'll just lose it. So we're just going to choose that, lay that in there, nice and clean. We need to make it nice and bright to prove that this object did have the light that is upon it. And we look at the before and it was just dim, you were kind of forcing an illustration if you could do anything, you can do the gradient and the inversion, like I said. So if you if you had to have a gradient, I mean, I don't even know how to get this started. If you if you had to have a gradient, I mean, it doesn't. I know you're doing it at the halfway point, but it just it just doesn't make any sense because the light is from the top down. The cavern or wherever he is is um, not cavern cavern uh, cave. I don't know. It's it's the light is top down proven to us it's like look how sharp this cast shadow is but the top half was dark that makes no sense so just flatten it out work on your values you know you had a big glaring mistake there um, that you didn't see and um, yeah uh, the head is not too large I don't think the head is too large I think compared to before it might have been too large I've seen heads that are this big I honestly think the head is fine um, but be, be very careful with what you believe is right versus the median between what is actually right and what is actually not right. That makes no sense, but just, just trust me, I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, it's, it's, it's where it was before, where it is now, and how it looks big just because we compared it to where it was before. So before after it looks big because that's how small the before was it's just all i'm trying to say before after all right so let's move on okay so these are texture studies for little creature-ish things and one of the biggest problems here is they all have an equal amount of dodge tool used on them. Dodge tool is not a cop-out. Dodge tool does not render for you. Stop expecting dodge tool to, to make up for uh, your inability and your lack of knowledge on how to climb your values. Dodge tool doesn't render for you. Dodge tool doesn't climb your values for you. You're going to have to learn how to organically climb them yourself. If you don't know what the texture is that you're working on, you won't know how to climb your values. You really won't. So. <clears throat> um, so, lesson of the day, Sarek knows what she's talking about. <laughs> yes, the head was very, very small. Um, so, what we're talking, I'm just going to do some quick, quick work here. Let's go texture by texture. So, bark is dark. <laughs> okay? Bark is dark. So, I'm going to go and darken it right off the bat. I'm going to try to darken it with a kind of a nice color. Not so saturated. Dark is pretty desaturated pretty pale. I'm going to start there. Multiply is just such an evil looking rule. All right, so bark is dark. That's the mid-tone you were missing. Dodge tool confused you. Ice is nice. <laughs> so ice gets to have a little bit more value in it. It does not have pure whites. So we're going to darken just a little bit. It doesn't always have pure whites. It has them only when it is extremely illuminated but it does have subsurface scattering which is why ice is nice um so we're going to saturate 
See that? Ooh la la. So we're saturating. And we're using the right value. So we're going to actually not put green on blue. We're going to get turquoise, which is green and blue. And we're just going to saturate the subsurface here that you were going for, which is actually what ice is doing. And I'm just going to get more of a turquoisey. Okay. Another thing that we kind of need to do with ice is just make sure we have the right amount of darkness um, in the dark area to prove that this is all. If it's some sort of magical eye glow, I guess that would, could be why you have two white orbs for the eyes. Okay. Ice is nice. <laughs> Bark is dark. <laughs> um, uh, how about fur? Is there a rhyme for fur? So what I'm doing here again is I'm just saturating all these little areas and this is how ice will behave more like ice. Satur subsurface scattering only happens in the shadows. It doesn't just happen anywhere. So this is a part of the side here that is illuminated. So that means it gets a little bit more, uh, what's it called? It's a little bit more of that uh, blue. And then the inside of the head is actually, isn't it dark? Isn't it shadow? So that means the inside of the head can have the subsurface scattering color as well as the eyeballs. That's fine. And then we can use dodge tool for that. So dodge tool is really good for subsurface scattering, but only if you're careful. If you're not careful, you can just, you know, just stop it. Don't use it. Don't even go near it. If you're not going to learn how to press lightly with your brush, you really have no business dealing with dodge tool at all. Fur. <laughs> fur is blur. Good job, Tommy. Uh, fur is blur. Uh, so kind of fur is smudge, but you know what I mean. The texture for the fur here is too light, so we need to go right back down to our mid-tone and get our darken layer, and we just darken. We gotta darken this dude. Why does he have pure whites? Is he glowing? No. Is he absolutely completely made of water? Is he completely wet? No. Uh, why would he have pure whites on him? So dodge tool, it likes to it likes to jump straight into white without even giving you a chance. If you use dodge tool on super low opacity, have nice healthy awareness of your values, you won't make that mistake. So what I'm going to do, do now is just correct some of this fur here. Most of the texture of fur happens on the outside. I understand if you can't use fur on the silhouette, if this is going to be for a game, you can't have too much of that hair texture on the silhouette, but on the interior, at least for the design, it's good. And then I'm going to give the eyes a gray white. <laughs> a nice gray white, nothing too extreme, just so that we can separate that. If anything is white in this entire system, it's the eyes. And then the teeth can have more of like a gray, darkish value because they're in the face. So he's a creature. He's an organic creature of blood and flesh. So he's not really going to have um, all of this, uh, just all this color happening on him. And so because we've taken care of that, I'm just going to get the cool version of green and just consider him like any other texture. I'm going to cool down this green for the shadows and throw that on just like that. And that way you have more of a cleaned kind of color um, theory, I guess, a cleaner color theory application. I'm just going to darken everything on the dark part. If you want to make him look more three-dimensional, you can grab the outside gray color here and use it to defuse some of these pieces, but that's really all you can do. You can't just go ahead and use white. Also, he's a big organic creature, which means he's an organic form study, so that means that he has a half of him that's light and a half that is dark. Um, so you need to decide where this dark half is. So I'm going to select this, this, and this, and then select inverse. It's locked. And I'm just going to darken half of his, his body so that he's at least responding to some kind of light source. By the way, how many mods do I have here today? 
Okay, then we have this kind of see-through, transparent blob of blobness. So I'm going to get a uh, dodge tool on mid-tones, dodge tool on mid-tones, and I'm going to consider him as one large blob, translucent, which means I bring in the background color and paint it on top. Don't worry if I'm losing the, the detail here, I'll bring out the old layer and I'll throw that in there. So that's the background color. And then finally, on top of all of that, we throw in the dodge tool on highlights because he is a substance that is kind of like uh, shiny and wet. But we can't leave the shine to be this color, this ugly dodge tool burny color. We have to go into desaturate and decide what the light source color is. That's the color that he shines back. So we have all of this as the before. So let me... Uh, Relax, let me grab this. So, and then paste, and then just get back some of those details here. Get back the mouth detail. Can bring in more volume as I do that. The detail around the eyes. I recommend you gray out the eyes just a little bit and then there is the terminator line of the bounce light so am I still uh, oh there we go so that background color is really important also there's the general half of the um, of the object itself so half the object is in light revealing the light and that's what's going to make him look three-dimensional so just like that it's going to make him look three-dimensional um, right on the outsides you can start showing some of that nearby environment this is the gray background I'm painting with by the way and again I'm just gonna select this and move backward so he looks more translucent more voluminous and um, He looks like he's actually part of a an environment. He's three dimensional. Oopsie. Shit. Right. You can do the same thing with his hands. Again, just choosing the outside color and painting through because that's what we're seeing. We're seeing the background. You grab that green and you throw it on the carpet beneath him because he's translucent. He is, the light is going through him, transparent, sorry. Okay, so he looks more involved in the, in the environment that he's in. And then, of course, you can saturate wherever there's a mid-tone. So, saturate here and here. He's starting to look like he's a bit more bubbly. I do recommend you desaturate his, the whites of his eyes because they are making him look a little bit like um, difficult to, because you can't make his eyes red and the whites of his eyes orange. You have to choose one thing you're gonna stick to and look how dark they are once I desaturated them. So, 15. I'm just gonna raise these up into a white. Maybe some of that white is being seen through, but this is something I recommend. If you don't like it, if this is part of the requirements, feel free to keep it. I recommend something that is a complement of the greens, so a, another color that might, um, yeah, that might help you. If this is a, a an object that is um, glowing inside out, if he's glowing inside out, what is what have we learned recently um, that uh, about light? What does light do best? How to make light more appealing. I wonder who will remember this. I'm pretty much giving the answer right now. <coughs> Does the slime also have subsurface scattering? Why was this uh, deleted? Oh, <laughs> it was an accident? Yeah. Sorry, Etienne. Uh, the slime, yes, slime does have subsurface scattering. Sorry, that was a mistake. If he's jelly, there is a gradient in color. That comes from density. 
So I'm just uh, saturating just a little bit here around wherever the light just shot right through in. A little bit on the inside of each eye just because the light is coming in from that angle. Um, that might be a bit too much considering that I didn't really like the red to begin with. So that's your choice. Um, light likes to bounce. Tone it back and it does more. Exactly, Kira. Exactly. So light does best when it's dimmed. Uh, so if he's like a little lamp boy, then we have to make sure, one, his insides are hot. So <laughs> we have to make sure that he has a bright enough value that he reads as a light source. So this is probably one of the only times Dodge Tool is probably the only tool you can use. And each time I use Dodge Tool, I tone it back. And in, that same, in doing this, my soft brush is releasing a texture that feels very, very luminescent. If you're losing the shape of his eyes, that's, that's what this is all about. That's what this comes with. He's glowing from the inside out. Either this is bad design or, or this is just what's happening. Next up would be saturation. Saturation is fed by light, so we can saturate like crazy around the inside. Saturate with any rings of light just around here. That might help us. But again, we dim back again, just like that. This little bit, actually I'm going to use the soft brush for this. This little bit carries all the way up into his little Casper hair. He's not responding to what? He's not responding to the universal anymore. He's now re he is now his own light source. If I'm interpreting this correctly, if he's supposed to be some sort of like physical creature and is not a light source, then this is all wrong. So just discount this. But if if he's um, you know this you know actual light source, then he's going to be needing all of that. Right, so he's got that little glowy bit at the top, a stem of light shooting through, not too bright, not as bright as the hot spot. You want to make him look like he's kind of a flame, so I'm going to just smudge at random sporadic patterns. And again, dodge tool right at the hot spots to reveal his eyes. And then we dim right back. This time I'm going to zoom all the way out, so I'm kind of dimming in the right kind of pattern. So it feels like we only need as much as we have out here. And then right on the outsides, it doesn't feel right to allow them to be like that. So we can just do this, or we can raise the entire value as a whole because and only because in order for a flashlight to glow, it needs a dark room. So if he is this bright and he's not in a dark room, he's not going to read as an object that is glowing. He has to actually be in a dark room. So if the room is dark, he'll actually look like he's glowing if combined with the, uh, the soft light. So soft light layer if he's combined with this. Wait, soft light not show on a dark event? Okay, never mind. If he's combined with that, he'll actually, you know, read as something glowing. And I just have to change that to his color. Okay, so you can't you can't really pull this off without the light background. Okay, but you can make him bright enough. You can give him a bright value. You can give him a hot spot. Um, if you feel like you need to dim this even more, do so. But uh, I do feel like he needs uh, that brightness. He needs to read. He needs to have a no man's land white in order for him to read as a value. And in the exact opposite direction, if you want the um, magma to glow, the first rule is always darken the nearby environment. This is He's not going to look like he's glowing until the environment is nice and dark. So I want to darken him as a whole and then darken only the shadows. So yes, I use dodge tool for all of these corrections, but that doesn't mean you get to use dodge tool willy nilly as much as you like. Also, there is a hot spot in here in this magma. It's not hot all the way around. So just like we did before, we're dimming the light 
to make it more intriguing. If we dim the light, we actually uh, make it more accessible, we make it more interesting to look at. A dim light is an interesting light. We can still saturate the magma, but it can't be that bright up there. <coughs> Okay. So this means that the innermost areas are actually going to need to be quite white. I just borrowed a quick white from here. So I'm going to decide on these areas in here to actually be the most saturated and most white. See that, that little bit of glow back when we, kind of like a subsurface scattering? This you get to do because you are now, you have a dark base, you don't need a dark background because the dark base is the, uh, is the magma, like the, the body of the, uh, sorry, the, the rock body. And I'm just dimming the tops and then I bring dodge tool back and heighten the value. So these are the only time you are allowed to use dodge tool and the way you used it everywhere is on a light source. But you used it on bark, you used it on fur. You, you really left nothing for when white is needed. So you see, I'm kind of making it look like he has bone structure made of the glowing magma inside. So it's not a, um, a complete brightness, it's just sort of, sort of showing the stems of the brightness. Oopsie, that was an undarken. And I'm going back and dimming one more time. I might need to do the before and after in this case so we can work with both. But in order for him to read as scary, as strong, yes, he's cute, don't worry. That took You took care of that with the triangle of beauty here. Uh, but he still has to be the texture you intended. That's satisfying when you see that realism in a game combined with all that cuteness and style. It's, it's, it's adorable, it's the best. So I'm just extending his little tooth notches here just to kind of bring in more detail around the focal point and I am going to illuminate the insides of the eyes just so they're the brightest point. And um, some of these, they, they need the eyes to be a little bit darker so, if, so it's, it's very tricky but if I were to um, darken the ice all around. So this is going to be tricky, but as long as I, ba I, I balance it with saturation, but if I darken the ice with midtones and highlights and saturate just a bit, it might work. It might work to make the eyes brighter and more and have more of what we need without us having to make the eyes any more bright. There we go. And then I'm just going to find wherever the light is coming from. And then that's the area that gets some sunshine. But remember, what's the sunshine color? If it's yellow sun, that means the ice is shiny enough to reveal some of that yellow in the sun. So with my soft brush on normal, I'm throwing in some of that yellow on anything that the light touches. See that? The subsurface scattering is still bothering me. I would choose a different color. I'm not so sure you would even have subsurface in this area, in this, in this entire, you know, this entire scenario, because it doesn't feel like it belongs. Because a subsurface scattering would be a silhouette situation. It doesn't seem to be um, actually saturating or using the right color. Let me try to find a different color. This color is not friendly. almost like a jade color. I would actually go in there and paint. No, just do some more texture, some more edge work. Edge work is really what's going to get you that fur feeling. Nothing else really. Just make him look nice and fuzzy. So slime is lime because we use a lot of yellow. <laughs> Um, ghost is, um, 
Oh, for a ghost, you use the most light. That's where we use the most light. And for lava, it's, um, uh, oh, God. This is so cringe. I'm so bad with rhymes. All right, so I'm just throwing some more textures. And I'm kind of trying to find a light pattern. So bark is dark. <laughs> Ice is nice. <laughs> um, I don't know. Uh, the lip, the inner turn of his lip should actually be a little, you know, like dark like that. So I'm just going to use darken layer to um, kind of figure that out. Uh, yes, I learned Photoshop uh, just by using it. There are so many um, tutorials out there, though, for anyone who needs it. I, I, didn't, I, don't, I haven't learned all the tools of Photoshop at all. Um, I just use layer modes, brush mode, my brushes, and that's really it. I don't use a lot of tricks. Lasso, I don't, I don't use lots of filters, just liquify for correcting. <clears throat> the teeth might be allowed to be white, but only after they've left the cast shadow of the open mouth. There we go. Um, that might give us a nice little cast shadow. Um, I'm not really sure what else we could do uh, to, to, to get this going. I don't know how much you're allowed. But let's flatten and go back to the textures. Okay, so every texture has its own light behavior. They don't all do the same thing. Bark was too light. It read like plastic bark. It was like a plastic toy. It just needs to be dark. That's all. You want to make it glow because of magic. Go right ahead. Have all the magic you want. You know, but as long as the bark itself is nice and light, you barely have any of that um, funny business. And then you have the ice, which which was just too dark in certain areas. That didn't really read as subsurface. And now it's reading as icy, icy, icy. Ice and nice. If you want to make the eyes white, again, have all the magic you want. Go crazy. Make his eyes glow. It's really up to you. Just as long as he's bright enough to show that the, the subsurface scattering has shot through him. Before, after. But see how we darkened the ice, but somehow it looks nice? -er? How does that happen? Isn't ice supposed to be pure white? See the amount of yellow we brought up here? The fur looks more like fur and less like patchy contrast dependency paint by numbers. And you want to keep this going. You want to keep going with the fur. Make it more mushy. Make it more textury. Make it more smudge. Fur is blur. <laughs> um, then the... It kind of looked like dirty slime water in here. It kind of looks like it's see-through again. You want to add in some more... Um, some more shine? Go right ahead. Uh, feel free. Just remember that the shine that you add has to be desaturated because you're, you're using the shine of the white of the light environment which is not at all yellow. I kind of feel like making his cheeks all white. Isn't that adorable? And then saturate, desaturate, and then just bring in that white in the slime. Except where there is saturation. If there is a belt of saturation, do it. If there is a massive little moment of saturation on the inside, just inside him right here somewhere, do it. Um, it just depends on the creature. What's the creature's requirements? Then the lamp. Um, the lamp needs to be a bit brighter. It needs to be a little less um, like goo. But if it is goo, remember I didn't know if this was a lamp boy. If it was goo, if it wasn't supposed to be a lamp boy, if it was supposed to be some kind of... Um, I don't know. It feels like a lamp, honestly. I don't know what else it could have been. He needs to be a little bit more bright. If you want to force the presence of the face and make the out, outlines more dark, you can do that. But you still have to have no man's land values all over the inside for him to read as a lamp and actually glow. He actually needs his little glow, by the way. Um, you can put that behind him. It doesn't have to be all over. And then the, uh, the really nice, bright, um, excessive use of white on the bark. Against all of that, the bark would be actually very, very dark. Um, so bark, I mean, not bark, rock, but it reads as bark, right? So it needs to be nice and dark for that to glow um, back. <laughs> these rhymes actually do help me remember stuff. Um, yeah, these guys are cute, uh, Salad. 
Uh, toothpaste boy. Yeah, I don't know what he is. I don't know what he is. It does look like toothpaste before, doesn't it? Um, so, uh, these, uh, any, any questions on these changes? Before, after. I don't know how much realism you're allowed in your character designs, but it's a nice little exploration for us today. Um, then we have this piece. I might not look at this because it's got way too much correction in it. Uh, but here, the person wrote that they actually wanted this to be moonlight only with little glows. Nobody takes pictures of, at night unless there are little tiny lights that make it interesting. Nobody takes pictures at night. Uh, you're not going to get anything back. So in order for this to make sense, you really do have to darken things down, way down. So this would be a nighttime scene. So I'm just going to go into the before in a second. And I will come back. See how nice darkened layer? It kind of looks like a comic book kind of setup. So darkened layer is what I used here. And then before, after, and I'm going to clean up this soft brush edge. It's nasty. Okay. Just cleaning that up. For you. Okay. And uh, that's going to be kind of a nice reflection of the nighttime environment. Then there's the fact that the environment itself, the whole thing, of the this whole setup, this whole story, this whole canvas needs to be a little bit darker. So this whole room needs to be darker. So hey, we set up the plate. Everything is good. Let's move on. We grab this copy. We moved back to the old copy and erase only where there were little lights with soft brush. Of course, that's the texture of light. Texture of light is soft brush. That's why we don't use soft brush because not everything has lights texture. Okay, and we're adding these little fellas. I don't recommend any of these little fellas out there. So if you think that these little guys all added together are, are enough to reveal the tree, you're wrong. Because the tree, this is daytime. This is actually daytime value. This isn't, this isn't moonlight. If there was some kind of moonlight slightly peeking through, it might do a little, a little thing like that. But this piece of bark would cast a shadow this way. Actually, let me just duplicate. Um, this piece of bark here would cast a shadow and then this little guy comes in this way and then the part of this bark here a little bit of this bark and there would be the cast shadow of the tree on all this bark so I would get the old version and just um, erase away so I can get the edges back <clears throat> So I, what did I do? Okay, so I, oh, okay, there we go. Okay, so I'm just trying not to let it bleed out. So this is kind of where we'd be when it comes to moonlight. It really wouldn't be this bright, It'd be this little touch here. If half the sky is illuminated with moonlight, then half the hemisphere would be as well. So you can grab something kind of just illuminate half the environment to show that the moon is shining somewhere nearby. Um, something like that. That's way too bright. Let me find something else. More grayscale, more blue because of the yellow in the moon. Something like that. And that would be your only picture because you're not allowed to take pictures. At, I mean, you, it's, it's, you can't. You can't take pictures of a moon, uh, it, would, it would just, I mean, of a moonlit environment, sorry, I'm getting lost in my brushes here, because it's not, it doesn't make sense, there's no light to feed the picture, so what are you taking a picture of, really, really crappy, half lit, really bad silhouettes, all you have left are these little guys here illuminating their local value, but they're not going to illuminate the entire light environment, they're too small, so all you can do is decide which areas are near to these guys, and that's what you illuminate with. And that's about it. 
So I'm just using my sketching brush here to uh, to illuminate. All right. So once we did, once we added the right kind of environment, you can see you had a really bad texture job of the tree. You didn't really place these guys in the right area. If you really wanted them to glow, you can try some like glowing mushrooms. You can try some other little glowy bits. Um, anything that'll kind of create a nice line of sight for the environment. Um, so in any environment, you're telling a story. If you're not telling a story, stop trying that environment. Um, it has to be an environment. Something has to be told here. You can have these little pieces glowing at different intensities. This one could be a little brighter on one side, and then this one could be a little brighter on the other. One can just be dim in between. And you can have a bunch of these. You can have many small little lights interrupting the value. But the light environment, the local value, the lesson of today is that it is a nighttime scene and needs to be adjusted to, be repre to represent the darkness in a nighttime scene. And if all you have are little fireflies, has anyone like hung out on like a summer night and they've seen fireflies and it's getting really dark and they don't really have any street lamps? You literally see nothing but the fireflies and the slight little stretch of the horizon in the distance. You don't see anything. So uh, what you did before was daytime. That's all that it read as. You have to be accurate if you're going to be so symbolic. Also, the texture and brushwork was intense. This is daytime value. This is like sunset. You, you know what? You could have just made it. You could have just shifted it over into the oranges, and it would have just been enough and make it a sunset scene. Because blue means nighttime, and it has to be dark enough. And you can go ahead and interrupt it. You can get a massive dodge tool. Oops. You can get a massive dodge tool and make these as bright as you want. It's, just, it's magic, it's up to you. You, can, you make the rules with magic. You can do this, and it'll brighten the piece back up. But you just cannot call this a nighttime scene, okay? Would, wouldn't the shadows be purple in moonlight scenes, or am I mistaken? You can make it all kinds of cool. I actually think that nighttime is not purple, it is navy and blue. Purple would be what we get in the snow if we had a uh, pure yellow sun. That's kind of the, the, the epitome or the uh, the best case scenario for a color theory experiment. Like for, for, for finding examples of color theory, purple would be visible in cast shadows, but only because Usually, purple comes first before we see the blue or something like that. When are you allowed to use dodge tool? When you're mature enough to understand that dodge tool is not going to render for you. I, I don't have Photoshop. I use Clip Studio, so I can't use the brushes you offered for purchase. Do you have a video on how to how the brush tip should look like? Um, no, I, I, I'm, I'm not sure. No. I don't have any of that. I haven't made any any brushes or equivalent brushes in Clip Studio. I really haven't had time to create equivalent brushes. I wish someone out there can just make a converter or something, but that would be crazy thinking about goes into that. Um, so I, I don't think I don't think that I will be releasing all the details of my brushes. Absolutely not. I'm not releasing any you know brush tips or anything like that. But like the brush tip. Um, itself, like details of how I made it, um, but um, it, it, you, if you explored a little bit, you'd actually be able to, to make your own. Um, yeah, I mean the blocking brush. Yeah, no, I'm not. I'm not making any uh, brushes anytime soon. <clears throat> Check on life pie night scene. Yeah, really nice. Damn, we drew those mushrooms in three seconds. <clears throat> They're not very good mushrooms. I don't know what you're damning about. <laughs> um, I love pictures at night but with long time exposure. Sometimes something our eyes can't do. Yeah, some only a camera. And in our modern world of full light, there is always some light. But in the forest, nah. Yeah, you would get this really ugly glare from the moon. Or um, if you can take a picture of a moon, if you can manage to make your camera take a picture of about the most expensive camera take pictures of a moon and, and I adjusted all settings and I couldn't get friggin moon details in there even though I could see them um, I, I saw less than the camera I saw more than the camera at night because the brightness is just too bright with such a dark environment there wasn't enough light to even allow the moon to be visible in its detail it just read as one big glowing orb uh, so the, the darker the environment the, the, the brighter small lights seem and that's all you really need to make it pass for this one um, 
It's just too much darkness toward. Oh, it's a PNG. We're gonna be here a while. <clears throat> but for that one, for the yeah, this one, you you make the darkness just flood out the object. You need to reveal more. Everything is just silhouette. This isn't painting. This is clip art. Okay, let me show you what clip art is. Okay, it's, where is this? Is this it? Clip art. So, okay, this is clip art. That's what you're doing here. Okay, you're not actually giving us values. Values require gray, va gray tones. You're not actually giving us form. Clip art, clip art, clip art. Even the mountains are drenched in shadow. Just so, God forbid, you have to add in any detail. Stop doing this. If you are having issues figuring out the meat of an object, if you don't know how to render it, if drowning it in shadow is the only way you get out of, um, get something done, anything, you need to stop trying to illustrate and go back into studies because you need to figure out how values climb. Using this extreme silhouette, isn't it may look nice, but that's all you can pull off right now with this painting. You need to decide on letting the sun set a little lower maybe. Maybe bringing in a cheat light from the top. Maybe the value, an angle you chose was actually a really bad angle because you didn't plan. You, you, you planned a silhouette only and it's just looking like a nighttime scene with a fire behind her instead of a full sun illuminating half the hemisphere. Um, so, I, uh, I half the sky. Um, so, um, yeah, I, I think that you need to go back and learn how to add values into an object to make them lighter values to bring in saturation, to bring out the body of the horse, to bring out the detail of her satchel, of her arm, of her leg, of her uh, gun, of her face. You, you can't have this kind of scenario all the time. Uh, so, um, uh, let me see, any, any questions at all? Are there some leaks on the next challenge? Yes, I did describe it at the start. Hello, I'm new to the community and I rarely comment, but the artist Frederick Remington has good examples of night paintings, but it emulates real life nighttime than camera. Uh, let's look at that. Thank you for that, Iwin. Ewan. Frederick Lemming Remington. Um, let's find it. Uh, so this, right? This nighttime scene? Well, he did it exactly as I explained that in order for us to be able to see the object at night, he added and uh, he heightened the values. No house glows like this at night. This would have to be a bioluminescent house. It would have to actually glow. Um, but to, in order for the picture to make sense, he tinted it in blue, which was check number one, and then he just raised all other values to be under a really, really bright moon. So all of these need a massive moon for this to even be plausible. Presence of the stars, dark clouds, and a blue filter is why it reads as a night scene. But these are still, remember, in order for the artist to pull this off, they have to cheat and raise the values up a little bit for this image to even be visible. Because nighttime desert. Okay, this is, uh, this is what we see at night. <laughs> okay. Oh, look. Oh, nighttime. Uh, this is not even correct. This makes a little, these, these right here. This, this is exposure, isn't it? I don't even know. This is what nighttime looks like in the desert. This is a super, super moon. I'm not even sure if this is, this is all fake, but this is kind of, you know, it's kind of pretty accurate in, in these respects. There you go. That's perfect. <laughs> That's perfect right there. This is what happens at night. This must be a sunset or a super moon or must be edited. Oh, I miss Minecraft so much. Okay. Um, it's like in old movies when they put fil blue filter over daytime footage to record at night. Yeah, exactly. I had like all my long time exposure photos. Yeah. Can I ask a question off topic? With the canvas layout, would you usually stick to horizontal for most things when we paint? If it's supposed to be an illustration that has more environment or is really or environment oriented, then yeah, you do have to go a bit horizontal. I never recommend tile. A lot of professionals break that rule, but they're professionals, they pull it off. They kind of know what they're doing with their detail and their, and their focal point. Um, also, Instagram forces you to kind of crop, uh, but usually they do go for a horizontal canvas. Usually artists then work with illustration that is vertical, usually book cover, 
Um, and that's when you get a vertical environment. Uh, but that's book covers. You have to have them in that format. And um, I think book covers would be a lot more intriguing if they were horizontal all the time. Um, yes, my blocking brushes are only available for Photoshop. I'm so sorry. <clears throat> and um, the moon is not dimmable in real life. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you everyone for joining. Uh, to join the class, go to istabrak.com and click on the little Google Plus icon at the top. Uh, read the rules. Join. Portrait Studio sale will be due on the 31st. If you are interested in joining us on Patreon, please remember that you cannot get your Patreon reward for April unless you sign in uh, and register before the first of the month. If you register after, Unless we can find a workaround for you, um, we, we won't be able to, I know which I don't do, we won't be able to give you the reward, I won't be able to give you the rewards, you won't be able to join in on the assignments for this month, and you'll miss a whole month of lesson. Uh, so if you are interested in, in, in joining Patreon for this April, um, and getting the assignments for this April, then uh, please join before the 31st. And finally, hopefully by the end, by the 1st, God willing again, I will bring out the resource pack for our next challenge, which is officially a boss fight. It's a game boss fight splash loading screen. And I will give you a quick little write up. It's not so much a, pa a passage like I did with the other challenge, but more of a, like a, I'm, I am your employer, I am the game director, and I am requesting that you design a really action packed splash art league style for the loading screen before the final boss fight. Um, maybe it's even the game the game's uh, cover, um, but it's really, really game oriented. Think about all the you know side scroller boss fights. It's a kind of like a it's a side scroller game, but the boss fight illustration it's illustrated. Uh, so you get to have middle ground, foreground, background. You get to go crazy, but it can be a very basic game. Uh, like all the splash art in League is so dynamic, but the game itself is so boring. Um, so uh, I'll let you guys go. Hopefully that's going to be a really, really fun challenge for you. I will see you guys on Tuesday uh, the 3rd. I apologize if for some reason you guys don't get paid till after this weekend, but the sale is over on the 31st. I'm apologizing in advance. The price is going to go back up, and um, the update will be out very, very soon. We're working very, very hard, and again, that, that might be why we, I delay the resource pack. But I'll see you guys on Tuesday. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Bye-bye.